Thank you for tuning in to Love in Your Hands with Cynthia Clark, soulmate palmist, spiritual teacher, love coach, author, and speaker. We're sharing stories of love and connection and lessons learned along the way. This podcast is sponsored by loveinyourhands.com, the place to ignite soulmate love fast using an innovative system to help you end loneliness and toxic relationships and elevate your vibrational energy to soulmate love and deeply compatible partners. Get started for free at loveinyourhands.com. And now here's your host, Cynthia Clark. Hello there, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Cynthia Clark, and I am your love and ascension coach. And I am super excited today to bring in a beautiful spirit and a beautiful soul. Uh, We are going to be analyzing her hands, and we're going to be talking about all things Uh, spirit related because of course we are on the ascension path and we are here to get stuff done. (laughs) So uh, as a chariot archetype in my hands, I'm all about let's just go for it. And uh, I'm excited that you're all here to join us. So today I have Teresa Barnes. She is a hearing loss awareness expert Uh, And she's also an RN and founder of Hear Communication, a business educational company that focuses on how businesses can better serve the niche market of those with hearing loss. So I'm so excited to talk about this because I look at it from a spiritual perspective. So let's, let's talk about that. So according to a Johns Hopkins study, one in five customers and employees have hearing loss. So that is actually way more than I would have ever guessed (laughs) in terms of numbers. Um, Although I do have a brother who's probably got about a 20% hearing loss. Mm. And and it comes from, uh, I would say, rock concerts, like going to rock concerts and just having that incredible noise and not putting in earplugs probably is how it happened. So (laughs) anyway, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah. Loud noise is the number one cause of hearing loss. So that is the number one cause. So there are actually product called Vibes, D-I-B-E-S, and Uh also orgasmic that musicians can wear or people that go to rock concerts can wear mm. in a noisy environment you can wear where you can hear mm-hmm. but you block out the noise mm-hmm. and you let in 72 decibels so mm. you can still hear which is good oh wow that sounds good <laughs> yeah when i was young i would just put in earplugs when i would go to a rock concert because it was so loud and well, that was good. that's the reason why you still have your good hearing right Yes, that probably is why I'm okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, I think it's probably also something that a lot of people, especially young people, don't even think about. You know, they just go out and they do their thing and, you know, they think they're going to be okay. Well, that's really what I'm doing is I am creating a movement for hearing loss awareness because even Jude Law has a poster where he says that people don't really can, don't even think about hearing or hearing loss until they lose it. And currently all you can do is do what's called remediation, which is where ear uh, hearing aids, I like to call them medical prosthetic devices Mm -hmm. or cochlear implants. But currently once you blow out your cochlear hair cells, Mm -hmm. they do not grow back. Mm. There's somebody back east working on it with stem cell research, but currently they don't grow back. So that's the reason why you want to keep your hearing as long as you can, because it's both the gateway to mental health and physical health, as well as a healthy business life and a community life, because it keeps you connected to other people. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. And if you can't connect to other people, you're going, I could see depression and, and all kinds of things coming in because you you feel isolated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now that we've had this COVID, yeah. many people have experienced isolation for the first time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <People> yes. With, <laughs> I, with hearing loss 
have experienced that their whole life. So I was born with hearing loss. Mm. My dad was in the Navy, so we don't know if it was a 21 gun salute Mm. right here in San Diego, or if it was malnutrition because they have now proven that foods, you know, uh, I actually teach a course call um, three key ways to improve and reduce hearing loss just with nutrition and supplements. That's it. Hmm. And then also whether it's genetically determined because my own aunt is deaf. Hmm. So it's one of those three. But I've had it my whole life. Hmm. Uh, and it wasn't until I got hit from behind on a ski accident, a snow ski accident, hmm. but not hearing a man yell from behind I guess he said, lady, I'm on my right or on my left. Oh, no. But I, I don't wear hearing aids on a ski slope because they're too expensive. You pop one thing and they're lost. Oh, no. And so that's what started all this for me. And then an artist neighbor pointed out to me, Teresa, they can't see hearing loss. And I went, wow. Mm-hmm. So that's why I came up with this symbol right here. Mm-hmm. To wear something like this to give this invisible disability visibility. And also you can wear it on your hat, you can wear it on your back. And then with hearing friendly training that I do as a business, then I teach people how to recognize people with hearing loss. Because Mm. if you take the extrapolation of the current population, that 20%, the one in five, it is (laughs) 65 Mm. million Americans that currently have hearing loss. And those who are wheelchair bound are 3.4 million. And we had 2.2 million um, um, Afghan vets come back with hearing loss. So it's no longer an older person's health problem. No, not at all. Yeah, my brother's not old. So yeah, he's, you know, and he's had a a long time too, I think. Because like I said, it was the rock concerts at at a young age. But um, for those who are not watching the video and are just listening on the podcast, uh, she's wearing a, a really a beautiful little icon of an ear um, encircled in a in a blue uh, just a blue icon. So it, it to me that that immediately says, yeah, speak up, <laughs> speak up, people. <laughs> it's an ear with a question mark in it. Yeah, yeah. How is, how is your hearing? Right. Is it mild, moderate, severe, profound? The deaf culture already has a symbol with a circle with it, with an ear, with a line to it, which means they don't hear at all. Mm. Uh, But the majority of the people, the 65 men with hearing loss have mild to profound hearing loss. And if you even have a 25 decimal hearing loss, then you're missing your, a lot of your vowels and your consonants already, Mm. which means that a child in school (laughs) <laughs> it's going to miss whether the teacher said may, day, gay, fay, way. Mm-hmm. What exactly did that teacher say? Right. It's the kind of thing. So it's an ear with a question mark. How is your hearing? So mm-hmm. therefore, like if with you and I, you know, to look at the symbol, hey, this lady, she has an ear with a question mark. So at least it's a conversational piece where you can say, what does that mean? And then mm-hmm. I can let you know. And right. And another 65 million Americans. Mm-hmm. So one of the products that are on here, communication. Yeah, yeah. And and that leads to, to uh, you know, my assistant who h- helps me with my videos. Um, mm-hmm. He has also told me uh, that I need to make sure that I have the, the, uh, the words written at the bottom of the screen so that people, he's like, you know, 70% of people don't even listen to videos anymore. They read them. <laughs> So I was like, wow, 70%? (laughs) That's amazing. Well, in 2008, we got um, the ADA law got amended, Mm -hmm. the American Disabilities Act. And that got amended to include people that wear hearing aids or cochlear implants. And so one of the clauses in there is effective communication. Mm. And effective communication... (laughs) Closed captioning mm-hmm. is what we're talking about. Right. Is one of those things that would really help. And it, like your diction is really clear. I hope my diction is pretty clear. Yes. If there's somebody out there that's listening that can't quite understand what I'm saying, then at least they can read it to mm-hmm. keep up 
Right. Because the hearing impaired person or hearing loss person or hear less person or hearific and terrific person, <laughs> which is <laughs> what I'd like to make it be for the next movement. Mm -hmm. um, you may be on sentence five when we're still on sentence one, mm -hmm. trying to figure out what did you, what did they say? Mm -hmm. and so you, when you listen, it's best to just listen to what the basic concept is rather than what each individual word is. It's just easier to do it that way. Mm. And that's one way I've been mm -hmm. able to be as, as successful as I have been. Mm -hmm. I do have a BA in communication, so that helped a little bit because mm. I did learn some of that back in college. Yeah. So, okay, so this is my theory about uh, why people have, you know, problems with certain senses, you know, whether it's their eyesight or their hearing or you know, people who, who end up going through a lifetime of struggle like this, on a spiritual side, I feel like it is so that other senses can become enhanced. So, for example, if you have a hard time hearing, then it automatically is putting you more inward so that you can hear more of your inner voice and your inner self and it blocks out all of that external distraction, so to speak. And maybe there is a purpose behind it why you need to do that. Would, um, so what, what do you think about that? Well, I know that my sight is really good. And it's mm -hmm. been really good. I do wear glasses now <laughs> for distance. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to use them for up close yet. So I, I know that I've always been an independent person. I know that I've always been extremely intuitive. I don't always listen to my intuition, but, but I do know that I am intuitive. Uh, and I know that I've had some people um, think that I was crazy because I have internalize certain things that I feel are going to happen or have happened or will happen. Mm -hmm. And then it's all because I tune into where I'm really at currently. Mm -hmm. And so it is one of those things that I walk along and when I'm walking, like last night, I went for a walk in an area that is a safe area. But I also saw that there were many vans uh, along the, this was an industrial area that overlooked the ocean mm -hmm. but I also saw that there were many vans and there was something inside of me that said you know Teresa go ahead and do your one little walk one way and one way back if it feels unsafe then of course I know how to go to the other side but I didn't do the three laps I had originally planned on doing because there was something inside of me that said this is not good. So just don't stay, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so I do feel that, that, that having a hearing loss, I've had to use my other senses as well as my internal sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Intuition. Right. So that leads us to your hands because you just said two, two things that I already picked up on your hands that <laughs> <laughs> totally, um, they, they validate what you just said. So I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen here and I'm going to pull up your hands so that everybody can see. And if you're just listening, no worries. I'm going to describe it. So, so don't worry about it. Okay. So, uh, Teresa's hand is definitely a fire hand. Okay, and we get this from uh, her fingers are short relative to her palm, okay? And she's got a very rectangular palm, okay? It's very long, uh, but it's somewhat narrow, okay? So this is what we call a fire hand. Fire types are very independent. So it's like, okay, yay, we need that because, <laughs> you know, if you're... Um, if you're wanting to expand your life and, and fire is also very spiritual and wants that expansion. When you think of fire, it likes to burn. It likes to go in all sorts of directions. It, it hates to be restricted. So you are one of those types who, who needs that freedom. 
Now, you've also got a long, uh, what we call your Apollo finger, which is your ring finger. Okay, now this is your presentation finger. So you have learned to present yourself very well with this problem that you have. And you've learned to deal with it. You've learned to, um, I, I love how you've brought in the awareness around it and you're actually helping people be more sensitive to it and just be more aware that, hey, you know, it's easy for you because you can hear. Not all of us can do that. <laughs> but that's where this Apollo finger comes in. It's showing that you have a need to express yourself and you need to share this with others. Uh, your archetype is what we call the wheel of fortune, which is somebody who can bring in abundance. So you really are... You can, you can bring in the positive. I love your positive energy, and I love how you, you look at things, even though it's a, a challenge or a problem, you bring in the positive side of it, and you can help other people to do the same as well, and just be more, um, the, 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 uh, the Apollo energy is also very creative, so you, you have an ability to bring it in in your own way. Okay, so that's, that's Apollo. It's like, uh, it, it's a beautiful finger, but you can underestimate yourself because Jupiter, this is your, your index finger, is going to be shorter. So we compare these two fingers next to each other. And uh, so if, a, if Apollo is long, then by definition, Jupiter will be short. Okay, so Jupiter is how you look at yourself. So you may underestimate yourself and you may underestimate your abilities. Um, and you may have some insecurity around it, which is totally normal and expected. Uh, but your intuition is really, really strong. And where I get that from is what we call your Luna part of your hand. Okay, this is the area of the deep subconscious. Okay, so the hand is actually, if you draw a line straight down the middle, vertically, uh, everything on the side of the thumb is going to be the conscious side okay everything mm. on this side of the hand is the subconscious side that's closer to the little finger and this section in particular what we call luna is the least accessible part of your hand it's where your thumb your thumb cannot reach this section of your hand so if you take your hand and you try to you try to go down there <laughs> your thumb can't reach it right no, so no. it's uh it represents the deep subconscious mm. Now, what I see with your deep subconscious is you've got all these lines that are coming up sort of at a diagonal. And also, if I just look at the, the quality of it, you can see kind of a puffiness to this section of your hand. Not everybody has this. Um, no. So this is showing all of the flow that is coming from your subconscious or your intuitive side. A lot of people have blockages in this area, uh, or they just don't have a lot of activity going on. Mm -hmm. um, the way that you're listening shows up here in your Mercury line, and you do have a pretty clear Mercury line. Uh, I would say it's one of your stronger lines in your hand, and this, again, doesn't surprise me at all, because it's probably being accentuated uh, due to your hearing loss. So it's like it's compens overcompensating. So my advice, of course, would be that you need to list keep listening to this inner voice, trusting this inner voice, and don't be afraid to share things that are coming from that place because the fire ultimately wants to get things out. You know, that's the, that strong, powerful, <laughs> independent energy. Um, and it's always evolving and changing. So, you know, there, there's not a lot of stability with this type of a hand uh, because it is very adaptable. Okay. Fire is one of the most adaptable of all the hand shapes. Mm -hmm. So things are going to be evolving and changing and growing and shifting and it's important for you to be able to kind of morph and shift with it. Mm -hmm. So that, that's just part of your energy. Now, who would be a good match for you in terms of a partner? This could include a business partner or it could include a romantic partner. 
is you want to find that air person. Okay. Oh. Air feeds the fire, <laughs> right? So an air person would have the exact opposite hand shape as you. They would have a long set of fingers. Okay. So the fingers would go almost as long as the palm and the palm would be more square. So you would have, um, they bring in the groundedness for you and they also bring in the curiosity and they help you, they help to feed your fire energy that wants to come out. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. And, uh, especially you would want to also find somebody with a strong little finger that would be the investigator archetype would be your best match. Uh, so their little finger would be very long relative to the other fingers and it would come, the little finger would come up above this upper phalange of Apollo when, okay. when you put the fingers together. Okay, so that's your best, that would be your best match. Okay. So, um, so do you have any uh, personal questions that you want to ask or uh, anything that you want me to kind of look for for you and we could maybe get some answers. Well, do you see me getting married another time? Okay, so marriage... a soulmate in my future? <laughs> okay, so marriage, uh, this is a good question you're asking. Uh, marriage is technically not in the hands uh, we do have what's called affection lines, which are in the hands, but I don't know if there's like a piece of paper attached to it, if you know what I mean. Like, um, I can see if there's a, uh, the strong affections, okay? So they're located underneath the little finger, mm -hmm. and they come just into what we call the mercury mount. Now, what I can see in this picture is that you do have a line. It appears to me to be quite long. And it, I'm not quite sure if it's curving down or not. I can't quite see, but you can take a look at your own hand and let me know. Um, I is think it's, it's curving down. It's curving down. Okay, so that would show more of a detachment, um, which can indicate that you're not ready yet for another relationship. Okay, now this doesn't mean that it won't change or that you won't get a new line that'll start above it or... The, that's the thing about hands is that they do change and shift oh. based upon your free will choices. Okay. Oh, interesting. I didn't yeah, know yeah. that. Yeah. Most people don't know this. So, <laughs> so the good news is it's saying that you can get, you can start to get ready for a new relationship. Uh, let's go ahead and pull a card on that and just see like, what is the, maybe what is the timeline for you? What does the timeline mm -hmm. look like? for a new relationship because it feels to me like there's some some work that you need to do first okay, okay the card coming up is the magician okay so this is actually a very good card very positive card it's saying that you could be ready within a year okay in terms of a new partner uh, this card is also about resources and it's saying that you have the resources available to you to choose to bring in that new partner. Okay. So I definitely see this as a very positive sign that you're, um, you just need to shift your energy in a couple of different ways. This is a manifesting card too. It's all about like, okay, it's time for you to really set your intentions and what is it that you really want to bring into your life. And then you've got to start envisioning that as coming in. Okay. Okay. Cause it's totally possible for you. Okay. This is not, um, this is not off the table. <laughs> right, <good. laughs> okay. So yeah. So the time is now to start getting ready and start preparing. And what do you see in my hands in reference to my business? I know you said before that you see abundance in my life. But, yes, um, yes. Wheel of Fortunes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is the thing with Wheel of Fortunes. <laughs> okay. So. Here a minute. Look. 
they, the energy runs in cycles because it's a wheel, right? So sometimes the wheel is like, woo, and it's like overflowing with abundance. But then sometimes you can be your own worst enemy and it can start, it can turn against you and it can be like, oh, I'm in this horrible cycle. When am I ever going to get out of it? Um, so the good news is you can turn it back into the positive cycle uh, I do see some challenge lines in your hands. I see a couple of things actually. So let's, let's go ahead and talk about those. Um, I do see a challenge over here in your, uh, Pluto region. Okay. This is a Pluto heart chamber blockage is what I would call this. And this has to do with letting go. Um, sometimes it can be letting go of something destructive or something really, um, traumatic, Okay, so I'm not sure exactly what it is that wants to be let go, but there is something that wants to be released energetically from your system. Okay, so that's the first thing that I see. You do have strong phalanges, like if we come back up to your fingers, your lower phalanges are strong. This is your zone of security when we look at the middle finger, Saturn. And so security is important to you and you do need to have that in your life. And you've also got some challenge lines coming up here to uh, Apollo, which can have to do with the, the inner critic. Okay, so you can be hard on yourself. You need to watch out for that. So finding ways to be more gentle, more gentle with yourself, kinder to yourself, uh, I would say these things are all very important. You do have some positive things, though, showing up in your thumb. You've got a nice, strong thumb, and your thumb is your willpower. So this is all about getting yourself, um, you know, you're determined. I see a lot of, like, <laughs> it's like, okay, we're going to do this. We're, we're going we're gonna to go. We're going to move forward. Um, and you've got some positive, looks like vertical energy coming in from your crown chakra. So again, it's the divine. The divine is feeding you. The divine is guiding you. And you um, just need to let go of anything destructive, either from your past or just energetically that you hold on to. You could be also empathic, which wouldn't surprise me at all because of all this intuitiveness that you're carrying, uh, fire types tend to be very empathic. And so make, making sure that you're not taking on the burden, and, and I almost feel like this with you, like you might be taking on the burden of everybody who has hearing problems. So it's like, okay, yeah, it's great to bring in this awareness. You're such a beautiful soul, but everybody individually has to choose whether to follow their heart, follow the divine or not. Right. And ultimately it's not your responsibility for them to do so. So trusting that you're just showing up, which you are, <laughs> you're showing up in a big way and you're such a beautiful person. Uh, but don't be attached to whether or not they accept it or not. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you, you are basically, I'm responsible for myself. Right. And then you can uh, give the information to the different people. Right. But then it's really their choice whether they want to follow through or not, you know, so. Yes, absolutely. So, and that can be hard for you because I see you really wanting them because of course they're going to benefit if they follow your advice, right? They're going to have this huge benefit, but they don't necessarily yeah. get it or see it or value it. So, um, so it's not your job to worry about that. Right. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm seeing with you. Do your you see me hands. moving anytime soon? Uh, moving. Okay. Well, that would be located off of the lifeline. Um, I can't quite see your lifeline very well on this picture. It looks to me like you've got a pretty solid lifeline. Uh, yeah, let, let me do a stop share here. Let's have you hold up your hand for me. Back it up for me. Okay. Back it up. Yeah, back it up a little. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty solid. Okay, yeah, here's your lifeline right here. It wraps around your thumb ball. Um, traveling can show up sometimes when the lifeline splits. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's pull a card on that. 
Let's see what it says. Because this looks pretty stable to me. Uh, okay, I so do, I do have that injury that went, it goes um, all the way to here. So okay, all right. 16, I was trying to get in my parents' house because I was caretaking the house and mm -hmm. my fist went through the door yeah, mm -hmm. you know, to get in. So. <laughs> okay, so the card coming up is the inverted page of swords. Okay, so this card is always about uh, sudden news. Okay, so uh, it feels to me like you may have an opportunity come up or maybe even a forced opportunity, <laughs> meaning that the universe is like pushing you in a certain direction and you need to follow it. Okay, okay. so yeah, this feels like uh, a move could definitely be possible. Okay. But, but it might seem, it might be a little bit stressful. I don't want you to feel like it's stressful. I want you to, again, always look at it like, okay, this is an opportunity right. for me to grow. Okay. So just try to be, I would suggest just to be flexible. Okay. Just be I flexible. I am adaptable, remember? Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and it's so nice to know that it's in my hands. I know I am. Yes. But then I never knew that it was in my hand. So this is totally new for me. Oh, yeah. Most people have no idea what's in their hands. So that's, that's why I'm here. Because <laughs> I, I love looking at, at what is there and, yeah. and educating people about it. So, um, but yeah. So are, are you interested in moving? Are you looking to move? Uh, it's a possibility because you said that there's something that's really holding me back and mm -hmm. that part of that um, energy, which I am here. So I'm not going to say too much about that right okay. now. All right. Uh, but I also know that um, uh, where I'm currently at is part of the past trauma from past lifetimes, if you believe in that. Absolutely. And so I know that uh, this is not really um, helping me uh, grow as much as I could. I'll just put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have this huge project that someone really admires this logo that I have and what I'm doing and everything that's there. And I'm like, wow, this is kind of neat, you know, mm -hmm. to actually be acknowledged for the fact that you've written a book, you know, mm -hmm. and to have that person show up for your book signing, whereas mm -hmm. another person doesn't, you know, so... <laughs> and then you're like, you're like, okay, well, why are you holding on to this, Teresa? You know, and mm -hmm. I don't know if that has to do with my insecurities or if it has to do with stability or just, um, uh, yeah, the unknown, you know, I, well, I don't know how to say it other than that. As a wheel of fortune, it is very important for you to appreciate yourself every day. Okay. So I would, I would wake up in the morning if I were you and I would just say, how can I appreciate Teresa today? Okay. And yeah. that is going to help kind of set the tone for you for the day. And just know that you were chosen for this lifetime. You were chosen to come here. You were chosen to do all the things that you've been doing. And you cho also chose to do this. So right. yeah, so it's like you were chosen and you chose. And mm -hmm. you ha also have choices. See, and that's where a lot of us feel like, okay, maybe I don't have a choice. You always have a choice moving forward. The, the power is in the now. So um, it's important for you to just ask yourself, well, do I appreciate this? Or is this does Teresa appreciate this? Right. And if the answer is no, then why do it? Right. Okay. And what came up before when you were first explaining my, um, I think you said the Venus, but my, my ring, my ring finger, you know, is my ring finger. Oh, Apollo. Finger? Yes. Apollo. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> 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 That's okay. Luckily, this is being recorded. But, but, but when, you, when you described my Apollo finger, uh, I was wondering, well, how do I move forward or how do I 
get to that next step or how do I, how do I do this basically? Mm -hmm. So is, is there anything in my hand that tells me how? <laughs> Uh, well, you definitely need to, you need to heal that Pluto heart chamber. So whatever it is that needs to be destroyed, it needs to be destroyed. So the trauma, the stress, the pain, okay. uh, that is the biggest block that I see. And, and, and it has to do with the not appreciating yourself, mm -hmm. that inner critic that can be too harsh um, so you need to be kinder to yourself. You need to start recognizing your own value, seeing your own value, owning your value. Um, and, and if you're not sure, you can always ask your friends, hey, what do you value about me? <laughs> and they'll probably have a huge list <laughs> of things <laughs> that you might not see or, re or realize. Right. And you do have that big heart. So yeah, that's in your Venus, which is that thumb ball region of your hand. That's your giving side. You have a lot to offer, uh, not just a partner, but, you know, anybody that you come into contact with. So, you know, asking yourself, well, what do I want to contribute? What do I want to share? And just being okay with the unknown because the, the wheel of fortune is very, uh, versatile, volatile, <laughs> so, like all of that excitement energy, that's part of the wheel of fortune. <laughs> Could you explain to me one more time the upside down card that you read? Yes, the page of swords represents of swords. news, sudden news. Okay, mm -hmm. so the, uh, the page represents somebody who is uh, youthful and curious. Okay. Swords is always the mental. So mm -hmm. this is, this has to do with like, okay, well, things are kind of up in the air right now. So uh, when it comes in inverted, it can really represent something that comes in very, very quickly and unexpectedly. So mm -hmm. that's why I would suggest to you that you need to be kind of on alert, almost on yeah. alert, like literally, um, like, where am I going? What am I doing? Okay. And be ready to pivot very quickly. Okay. okay. Because I feel like you have opportunities, um, that will come up quickly. Okay. Yeah. I, I've missed a couple of opportunities and I'm just going to say that post fact, when I think about it, that I think it's because I didn't really hear clearly. Like I was on an interview on Monday and the man said that, yes, he did want me to be part of the speaker series. Mm. And this would have been a huge win. Mm -hmm. And he said, my team, what I heard him say, cause it wasn't captioned. <laughs> another one of those zoom was yeah. um, I'll have someone in my team reach out to you. Mm. And then nothing was done. So I waited that appointment was at one. I waited until the following day to see if I got an email. I didn't see anything. So then I did contact my lead for getting me in to find out, okay, where's my email or where's my information on this? And I still haven't heard anything. And you're like, okay, if I had heard a little bit better, <laughs> mm. I'm putting my excuse on that. I would have said, could you please give me your email? You know, so I didn't think about it until... Mm. I mean, I didn't think when we were in the meeting, mm -hmm. it didn't dawn on me to ask for that, you know, mm -hmm. so right, I right. just felt like, okay, maybe this is another opportunity that slipped through, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then I received a text last Wednesday about something that I was supposed to do, and I somehow or another, I messed up, and I didn't do it either, you know, mm. so that inverted page is working, mm -hmm. but Teresa needs to learn how to listen better, I guess, <laughs> so... <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> but keep working on it. I mean, have yeah, patience yeah, yeah. with yourself, you know. I'm ready for change. Yeah, yeah, I think you are. So um, so why don't you share a little bit of how can people reach you and how can people work with you if they're interested in learning more? Okay. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook at HEAR, H-E-A-R, Communication, singular, C-O-M-M-U-I-N-C-I-T-O-N. And that's also a dot com. 
You can reach me on LinkedIn by here, Teresa Barnes, R-N, and that's T-E-R-E-S-A. The bookstore, B-A-R-N-E-S, and then R-N is R-N. That's pretty simple. And you can also reach me by telephone number, which is 760-717-8190. If you're listening internationally, then 800-491-9483. And you can also just reach out via social media at uh, on Instagram at Teresa Barnes RN. So I think that's enough the options right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Was that too many? No. I'm also on YouTube as well, but you know. So. Yeah, perfect. Okay, well, I really appreciate you coming on and it's been a pleasure speaking with you and getting to know you and uh, you're such a beautiful light. Remember, you are the infinite light. Uh, and uh, everybody out there, remember to live life with love and to share your light with the world. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Love in Your Hands. Please rate, review, and subscribe to show your support. Have a question for Cynthia? Just post a comment. This podcast is sponsored by loveinyourhands.com, the place to find soulmate love fast. Start your free Soul Connection membership today, upload your hand photo, discover your relationship archetype, and start finding soulmate matches. Just go to loveinyourhands.com to get started.